I was in my mid twenties wanting to get a raise at my job, kept asking over and over again to no avail. Finally, my father clued me in to this term that was really groundbreaking for me. You're listening to Financial Grown Up with me, certified financial planner, Bobby Rebel, author of How to Be a Financial Grown Up. And you know what? Being a grown up is really hard, especially when it comes to money. But it's okay. We're going to get there together. I'm going to bring you one money story from a financial grown up, one lesson, and then my take on how you can make it your own. We got this. So what were the magic words my guest father told her about? And no, they were not, I quit or anything like that. But I do promise you, friends, you will learn a lot about the harsh reality of trying to pry more money out of a current employer. Emphasis on current. You're also going to learn a whole lot about the power of information. My guest is Farnoosh Charabi. She is a big name in the personal finance space. You probably know her as the host of the So Money podcast. She's also the author of a growing list of best-selling books, which began with the You're So Money, Live Rich Even When You're Not, published in 2008, and her most recent, When She Makes More. She also has a red-hot course on Investopedia, on personal finance. What else? I'm going to ask her about it. Here is Farnoosh Charabi. Farnoosh Tarabi, you are a financial grown-up, and I'm so excited to be chatting with you today. I'm so glad that I earned this designation of financial <laughs> grown-up. How great. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy you're here, and you're definitely a grown-up. And by the way, I have you to thank for inspiring me to do this podcast. It was something that I was thinking about for a while, and we had a little conversation in the green room at the 92nd Street Y before a conference, <laughs> and that was kind of the final push that yeah? I needed. So I am forever grateful. So oh thank you. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm glad to help. I'm, I'm happy to serve. I'm And so wonderful that you're doing this. It's it's, it makes a hundred per thousand percent sense. Women podcasting about personal finance is a category that we want to grow. So mm-hmm. we're all in this together. And speaking of growing, you are moving into courses. You have a really cool new thing happening with one of my favorite websites, Investopedia. Investopedia.com basically brought my dreams to life. I've always wanted to do a money course, but as you know, as people listening know, you know, a course is a big project. It's not just the teaching of the course, but it's the marketing, the infrastructure, the sales, the production. And frankly, all of that just made me get dizzy and not feel like at all interested. I just wanted but to show up and But this is where you teach. say, this, it was worth it though. It was worth it. Well, they came to me and they're like, we'll do all the back end stuff if you can just show up and teach. And that was music to my ears. So together in collaboration, we created a nine module money course catered to graduates, people who are just recently out of college, young adults, they're getting their first paycheck, their first real paycheck, and they want to learn how to maximize it, how to make the most of that weekly, monthly paycheck. And so you're going to learn about how to budget, how to save, how to invest properly, how to earn more as salaries have been stagnant for a long time. So really excited about that. If you go to academy.investopedia.com and you look for personal finance for grads, that's the new name of the course. We ended up switching it because we wanted it to be really specific about who we were targeting, personal finance for grads. And if you use the code Farnoosh20, you'll get 20% off. It's just 99 bucks, but you'll get another you know, 20 bucks off with that code, Farnoosh20. And also maybe a good graduation present. Um, yeah. Just a couple months from now, people will be graduating. It's a really good thing, even if you're not a graduate, to think about gifting to someone. So just saying. Great idea. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that plug. It's lifetime access. So whether you buy it now or in six months or today, you'll have it forever. Good stuff. And by the way, I when I was studying for my CFP, Investopedia was my go-to destination. When you're looking for some arcane financial term, they have it all there. So <laughs> that's my nod to Investopedia. Yeah. Well, they're the largest resource for financial information. So it makes sense that you were able yeah. to bank on their right. definitions. No one would have some of these terms, but they, they have everything there. So they're a good place to check out and get your course. But I also want to talk to you about the 
money story that you have brought today because it has something that I would love to do, which is that it doubled your salary. So tell mm-hmm. me, how exactly did you double your salary? I was in my mid-20s wanting to get a raise at my job, kept asking over and over again to no avail. Finally, my father clued me in to this term that was really groundbreaking for me. It was this what's known as your salary range or your salary band. It's information that human resources typically has at the ready to give you. They're not going to voluntarily give this to you, but it is your right to know. So I went to HR because what this salary band essentially tells you is what your employer has budgeted for your job, for your post. So at the time I was a producer, I discovered through HR that the salary band for my job at this particular news station was anywhere from $44,000 up to $85,000, $90,000. That's a big range. That's a big range. And guess what? I was on the very <sighs> low end of that range, despite having been there going on three years, doing multiple jobs that were above and beyond my original job requirements. And they didn't just come to you and say, you're working really hard. Let's just give you no. that. Top. No, that, really? When does that, that ever happen? Shocking. Right. So I was taking all the right steps, but this was gold. You know, learning actually what my company at the most valued me at was gold. Now, I will say that I used that in my next meeting with my boss. Since I have some updates, I discovered that I actually can make up to, you know, $90,000 in this role. I've been here for three years. I'm still at the very low end. I'm like in the fifth percentile of this range. So, I'm not saying I want to make ninety five or ninety thousand dollars, but I do think we could bump me up like five or ten k. And it was okay. Well, maybe when you know we review budgets, it wasn't like a done deal. So then I started to really see the handwriting on the wall. Started to look outside for a new job. When I got interviews, I never forgot that salary range. And when I finally got close to a a deal at this new employer, and they were talking money, they said, "How much do you want to make?" And I remember that range because that range was not like, remember, that's not just a range probably for your employer, but it's industry, you know, norm. Right. Companies know what's going on in their sector. They know what's going on. And this new job that I was interviewing for was a step up for me and it was a, a, a more senior position. So that range was, you know, probably not even valid, but I used it as a baseline. So I said, I would like to make a hundred thousand dollars. They said, well, we don't have 100, but we can give you 80. That sounds good. (laughs) I said, okay, well, you know what? Um, I really, really want 100. And they said, well, why don't we start at 80 and then in six months we'll review where you're at and we'll we'll discuss maybe giving you a, a 100 at that point. And I'm like, okay, this is the time to take all the money you can. When you're in negotiations in six months, they're not even gonna remember what they said about some meeting they wanted to have with you. So I said, look, can I have 90? And then I won't bother you in six months. I like that. And they said, sure, nice and clean. And, you know, so effectively I doubled my salary. I went from 45 to 90. And I all credit it to knowing that salary range. So, Farnish, what is the lesson from your financial grown-up money story? The lesson is you have to be your biggest advocate. You have to continually be curious about what it is you're after. So I was not going to take no for an answer from my boss. And I just kept exploring and digging and questioning, how can I make more money? And I talked to my family about it. It ended up my dad was the one who told me about this salary ban thing, which I had no idea about. If I hadn't told him about it, I probably wouldn't have walked into HR and asked him for the number. So don't give up. You know, a no is one step closer to a yes, as long as you stay curious and determined. So let me ask you, do you have a day-to-day money tip, an everyday thing that you can recommend to people that they can implement right away? Implement right away. I would say check your numbers every day. Look, I don't do this all the time, but I do step on a scale quite frequently because (laughs) I want to make sure that, you know, if I had a pretty crazy weekend of eating... I can check in with myself. I keep myself accountable. Like, I've okay, I've gained a few pounds. I need to be mindful of what I'm putting in my mouth this week. <laughs> but your money's the same thing. Like, you might have a week or a month where you overspend. 
it's important to know where you're at at all times so that you can adjust. You can continually readjust and adjust and fine tune your finances, but you're never going to be able to do that unless you have the knowledge of where you are financially. So on my phone, I am constantly checking my bank balance, my credit card balance. I check my Mint app, you know, just to see, am I overspending, underspending? I, I, I set budget limits for myself. This maybe isn't an every hour or an every day thing, but it certainly should be a regular, maybe twice to five times a week kind of thing. Well, it's also smart to check in because there's so much hacking and fraud, fraud. that this way you spot it. Absolutely. Right. So for that reason alone, you should be checking your bank account. Awesome. Thank you for all the amazing advice. And thank you for being part of this new program. We really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. Here's my take, guys. Part of being a financial grown up is taking advice from your parents. I'm not always the best negotiator. I'm going to toss this one to my parents and share some advice that they have given me over the years. Financial grown up negotiating strategy number one, courtesy of Adele Rebel the just keep your mouth shut technique meaning let the other person say the first number. True story, I once had a number in mind as a reach for a job. I didn't think I was gonna get anywhere near that kind of money, but I kept my mouth shut, let them make the first move, and the offer came in $10,000 higher than that reach number. Then I sat there, I was calm, cool, collected, pretended it wasn't enough money, asked for more, and you know what? I got another 5,000. Bonus tip, by the way, from my mother, the keep your mouth shut strategy can also work for losing weight. I'm a CFP, not a nutritionist, but guys, it does work because of course you eat less food. Okay, back to our focus on money. Financial grown-up strategy number two comes from my father, Arthur Rebel. Companies show love and appreciation with money. Companies may try to distract you with a fancy new title and lots of new responsibilities, but then they don't give you a meaningful raise. Imagine if you tried to pay your visa bill by saying, well, my budget's tight, but I'm gonna call you my senior global credit card. Yeah, not so much. Take the higher title and say yes to moving up in terms of responsibilities, that's all good, but just know it is not the same as a raise. Companies show love through compensation, AKA money. So try to keep the focus on the money. Thank you all for the amazing feedback that we have already been getting on the program. It is truly appreciated. Please subscribe, download, share, review, rate, all that good stuff. We need it. We are a brand new podcast. All of your support means the world to us. I hope everyone enjoyed the show and that we all got one step closer to being financial grownups. Financial Grown Up with Bobby Rebel is edited and produced by Steve Stewart and is a BRK Media production.